Ooh, it's a nice bus. Oh, it is a very nice bus. <laughs> what an amazing way to start the day. My goodness, that is an absolute chunk. That'll be possibly seven or eight pounds. My goodness. Oh. Literally, I've just come out to check my pots. And I just, uh, I just kind of thought, oh, this looks like nice conditions. I'll just try this little bit of reef here. Literally, just snapped on a sidewinder lure washed it out straight over the reef was literally the first retrieve look at look at that fish look at the size of that fish look at how broad it is look at the depth the size of that belly there look what an absolute beast of a bass. There's the lure that I took it on. What an incredible, <laughs> what an incredible fish. Oh, I'm absolutely buzzing. You can see that there. <laughs> First cast. Oh, what a fantastic start to the morning. Look at that. What an absolute beauty. The size of that mouth, that is incredible. She is, <laughs> she is laden. I'm absolutely, I'm gonna have to get this on the scales. We'll get it in this pocket of water. I'll let her recover in that pocket of water there, but I'm, aye, she'll be eight pound that. Amazing. Yeah, I've had her recovering in the net for a while. I think she's about ready to go. Ready? Ready to go, girl? There she goes. Two small edible crabs. <coughs> I 
this one has only got one claw. <coughs> Tell it's a male because it's got a narrow V up there. You see these little white worms on it? They're called keel worms. And all it is is just it's a little worm that creates like a like a calcium shell around itself. These are they're they are like parasitic worms, folks. They don't really harm the crab, and when it comes to shed its shell, it'll lose them. Looks like it's been it was a bit, doesn't it? He's had a couple of bats and nicks. It's a bit small that one. Another little male, again with some more keel worms on him. This is probably just under minimum size, but you don't really want to be taking them until they're like that big. One of the pots is completely stripped, with no bait in it at all, and no crabs either, which is a bit strange. When you find things like that, you kind of think, oh, is there a hole in it? I'll have a good look, I'll rebait them, and I'll get them shot in a different area. A load of bullocks and a load of little crabs. Just gonna dodge this out there. The problem that we had there was the wind picked up quite strong and was blowing us straight onto the rocks. So we had to haul the pots real quick and just steam out and I'll sort them out a bit further on there. See that one in there? See him in there. I think what's happened here is they've got into the pots quite quickly. Because there's absolutely nothing else in there. There's no little crabs, no out. You want to hold one? <laughs> see the teeth on it? You can see that these are rough ground bullets. Just by how dark they are, look. See them teeth there, this is why you need to use decent decent gear when you're fishing for them. This one's maybe, it'll be four pounds. This one in here is even bigger. Oh, look. It's 
Yeah. He's so funny, is it? Tell you what, they're really strong. Another rough ground bullus. Do you want to hold this one? No. no? Okay. <laughs> Don't blame you. Now you can tell it's a bullus straight away by its sheer size. You wouldn't get a dogfish this big. Also, you can see these two flaps on its nose there. A bullus is the only one with those. A real big broad head. The size and those nasal flaps says bullus. Yeah, the rest of the pot's just absolutely clean. No bait, no nout. It's okay. There's a little male edible. There's a male velvet crab. This actually would be big enough to take. But we're not after it, we were after lobsters. Let this guy go back. Again, another decent sized velvet. Another little male edible crab. He's been in the wars, this guy. Look, he's already lost one claw and this one's all bashed up. <laughs> and again, another little edible crab and another velvet. This one is a big one, this one. He was, he was hiding in there, wasn't he? That one's a male. This one actually is a little female. So, crabs and bullos. We'll get these rebaited and get them shot back. Get much better than that. Two get big lobsters in one pot. There's one look. Check the tail, no V's. I might just be size, I'll get a measure on that. Might just be in. But look at that beauty there, look. Lobster number two. Again, no V notches, no eggs, fantastic. Now look, two cracking lobsters. Oh, buzzing, two females. Give me tape measure out, measure that one now. Get these pots baited back up and get them out. Ah, well done. <laughs> Saying that though, these two are completely stripped and there's nothing in them, which is strange, isn't it? Not even like a starfish or a spider crab or anything. This one baited back up. I'm actually using cuckoo grass because I caught one on my feathers earlier. And when their swim bladders blow, they won't go back. So I'm using it as pot bait. We've got a little bit of an onshore wind here. The pots are in now. We're in 12 feet at the minute, so they're in about six to eight feet. We're only, you'll see in a minute when I spin the boat around how close we are to the shore. But you should run in and then head up to them and then pull them in. So you're pulling yourself away. I'll show you. Are you ready, James? Yeah.
my goodness, James! What have we got in this one? A dogfish shark with a blooming great bullos in it. of edible crabs. And a baby bullos. We've got a big dogfish shark and a baby dogfish shark, don't we? That one in there is an absolute bruiser. I don't know how he managed to get in there. A couple of small edible crabs and a couple of bullos. <laughs> I'll deal with the smaller ones first. Nope. The little edible crab. That's a little male edible crab. It's probably just below the minimum size, but they're way too small. I don't want to be taking crabs unless they're what. Look! It's a little little baby dogfish shark. Oh, I tell you what. I've got some attitude in for a little guy. Look at him. You'll just wait down there. We're going to throw crabs in a minute. We'll get this guy out of here now before he starts going mad. Oh, it's a fat one, isn't it, James? That's a monster, that's probably going to be over £10. Now. Oh, crikey. Whoa, look at, look at them teeth. It is really mad, isn't it? Look at the size of it, James. <laughs> it's right away. Oh, I tell you what, it's strong. I'll give it that. Look, the eyes are incredible on these things. Look at the size of that. Look at fat belly on it. No, we're not going to take it home. Look at them teeth. Look. No, no, we'll let them both go. See? You can tell the difference. You can tell the difference between a bullos and a dogfish by these nasal flaps. And the size, you'd never get a dogfish this size. I wonder if it's I wonder if it's like Mother and baby. That's a monster, I'm going to get a photo of that. Right, what else have we got here? There's two more edibles. Now look. This one. This one's a male, you can see because it's got like a narrow V and this one is a female because it's got a wide V. So yeah, a little male and female edible crab. I'm going to let them go. Yeah. Get our cell moved off a bit. I'll get a photo of that bullet and get it back. tried one night with the pots in on the sand and this is literally everywhere it's just full of little tiny hermit crabs and these shore crabs look 
see that they're actually called harbour crabs. See, they've got like a swimming leg on the back. But every pot is full of absolutely chucked, full of hermit crabs and shore crabs. And you can hear them all hitting the deck, can't you? Oh, there's a big whelk. That's the live creature in there, look. And that shell there. Uh, I call it an upper column, but pe people have told me it's pronounced opu op column. Opu column. There's a live whelk. But yeah, just millions and millions of hermit crabs. You can hear them all hitting the deck, can't you? But one cheeky prawn. And just dozens of these. How many little hermit crabs was there, James? So many, wasn't there? Oh, there's a big one there. Gonna be forever picking up little hermit crabs off the boat, aren't we, James? That is a proper hermit crab there, look. One massive claw. If you can see him hiding inside of there. We'll leave him down there and see if he comes out. There is another one. See him hiding inside of there? He's actually got. <laughs> well, that's a pair of uh, anemones, but you know what they look like. That is interesting. I don't know what that one is. Almost looks like a velvet swimming crab, but it's not. I don't know that, I'll have to get back to you on that one. That one is unusual. Yep. There's another hermit crab in there with all the shells. Unfortunately, the audio in this clip was just too bad. It's just too much wind noise. This was actually the last trip of the year with the pots. Everything has moved off into deeper water. The big crabs, the lobsters, the edible crabs, everything else. When it gets to this time of year and it gets cold and the weather gets real bad, they all move off into deeper water. It's just what happens. So it was a, it was a perfect time to bring them in. We've had a fantastic year with them so far. We've had, um, had loads of great crabs and lobsters out of them. In this last haul, I think it was only a few little edibles, a small bullus and this small female spider crab. But better look for next year.